and they will say, oh, the little lamp with the genie on it came on. The little genie lamp light came on after they've driven for a long time with the little genie lamp on, lost all of the oil in the car and destroyed the engine. It must be the genie's fault. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. Good afternoon and welcome to my second video on electric vehicle breakdowns. After I posted the first one, I had many, many emails, one of which resulted in a phone call with a chap who works for one of the biggest breakdown companies in the UK. These are my notes from that phone call. So I'm going to talk you through his general points on electric cars and then some general stuff about breakdowns in the UK in the modern world. Please forgive the lack of headlining. I got halfway through the job today and then the rain basically stopped play. So new headlining on the way, but for now it's the Volvo 850 Superleggera because it's got no trim inside either. Most of the interior trim is in my shed. Anyway, electric vehicle breakdowns straight from the horse's mouth. Electric vehicles are particularly susceptible to software issues that just cut them dead with nothing that can be done. Porsche Taycan, he highlighted as being a car that is particularly susceptible to just shutting itself down. The VW ID4 and ID3 are also possibly the worst, but that's because there's only 10 dealers in the country that can work on them. So if you break down in your ID3 or 4, it has to, correct me if I'm wrong, go back to only 10 dealers nationwide. That must be a right pain. 90% of the problem is usually software related. However, with an electric vehicle, the main battery trickle charges your 12 volt battery. Obviously with a normal car, your 12 volt battery is charged by the alternator as you drive along. But with an electric car, when you're charging it, the 12 volt isn't being charged. So you're charging the main battery for the car to propel it, but you're not charging the battery that runs all of the essential things like the charging flap and all of the lights and the keyless entry and the keyless go and the alarm and the motion sensors and those stupid puddle lights that you have in the door. They're all being powered by the 12 volt. So although you might think that you're charging your whole car, in many cases, you can actually be draining down the one battery that you need to get you going. So he says, for example, people have situations where they plug the car in, they go for a coffee, and then when they're finished, the charge cable won't come out and the car is disabled because the 12 volt is flat. In my notes, I've written Nissan Leaf and Hyundai, cars that are particularly susceptible to that situation. The emergency release procedure for the cable, if the cable won't come out, is to stick a boost pack on the 12 volt battery, just like you would with an older car. Moving on to some more general things, let's talk about oil lights. For me, as a car guy, I understand my vehicle. I know that if certain warning lights come on, I could pretty much just carry on. But an oil light is not something I mess around with, nor is a coolant light. Oil and coolant, stop straight away, work out what's going on with your car. This is not uncommon, he said, for people to just carry on after their oil lights come on. And they will say, oh, the little lamp with the genie on it came on. The little genie lamp light came on after they've driven for a long time with the little genie lamp on, lost all of the oil in the car and destroyed the engine. It must be the genie's fault. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. Interestingly, staying with the subject of oil, we talked a little bit about oil consumption. Modern cars use more oil because of the way engines function in terms of their emissions. So modern cars have all this technology on them that is meant to make them better for the environment. But as a result of the technology that they've got that makes them better for the environment, they're actually consuming more oil. Years ago, when I was an apprentice, one litre of oil consumed per 1,000 miles was considered a problem. Now, one litre per 1,000 miles is considered normal. What? That just seems insane. And yet again, I find myself in the context of cars saying we've gone backwards more than we've gone forwards. In that case, then, if the vehicle's on a three year lease deal, let's say, and the oil hasn't been checked or changed in three years, which is sometimes the case, you've got an absolute disaster waiting to happen for the next owner who buys it from the dealer that bought it from the auction that the car went to after it is disposed of by the lease company. There's an increase in punctures from potholes and also, there's an increase in eggs on the tyres. What that means is when there's a big bulge on the side of the tyre. And what he puts that down to is the fact that modern cars are A, heavier, but B, 
they're set up to be so tight to drive to handle well that there's no give in the suspension so the suspension doesn't blow out as such but the tires do getting on to volkswagen and audi again dsg gearboxes due to lack of servicing young lads or people that are financially tight getting serviced on the cheap and being driven hard 60,000 miles with launch control and then they wonder why it's broken so dsg gearboxes we know that they're a little bit fragile uh, but if you don't service them and you don't look after them and if you're a young lad and you're irresponsible and you drive everywhere using your launch control you're going to break your gearbox which means you're going to need to be recovered smart motorways i will not pull out onto the smart motorway without highways closing a lane very interesting point if you break down on a smart motorway there's a small number of recesses where you can usually get in now if you're clever and you're fast and you know what your car's doing you can probably sneak out of the little recess safely into the traffic however highways always say wait and we'll close a lane for you and this chap is basically saying i would never even consider pulling out without having that lane closed and it's a great point now, i've already touched on smart motorways I've done a video on smart motorways. I can recommend you go and watch it, but that's a great point. So after smart motorways, we went on to talk about tyres. Uh, we've already mentioned the fact that tyres are blowing out more than they normally would. There's more punctures, there's more tyre damage happening. But part-worn tyres, obviously it is... But part-worn tyres, we're on tough times. Everybody's struggling financially, but we kind of both had a little agreement where we said part-worn tyres, what are you doing? But it's not just, you know, your chap that's running a crappy old Astra on a 97 plate is putting his part-worn tyres on from his mate down the road. People with modern, posh, decent-ish cars, perhaps they're leased, maybe they just haven't got the money to do the servicing, but turning up to a half-decent car that's wearing terrible tyres is a really simple aspect of car ownership and car maintenance. Look after your car, check your tyres. But nobody does these days there's there's been a, a huge decline in people actually checking you know your, your basics you know your basics you're gonna go on a road trip you go tires coolant oil have a got washer fluid all your real basic things that i guess us as car guys would we, we just do it's not being done by people so people are going miles and miles without checking their tires and i had i had a great example of this not too long ago someone broke down outside my house i heard them pull up because i could tell that they were driving on a tire that was just gone and i went out to help her put the spare on and i just thought oh you know she's hit a pothole and the tire's blown out but no the tire had blown out because it had worn through and i said to her who checks your tires for you she said oh my boyfriend i said right you need a new set of tires and you need a new boyfriend passing the buck Hire companies blame the lease car companies, the lease car companies blame the hire car companies, and nobody actually takes responsibility when somebody's broken down, which is why you end up in a situation like what I ended up in when I broke down in this, when I had a hire company phoning me trying to give me a car, I had a taxi company phoning me to tell me that the taxi was there, neither of which happened, and I spent five hours at a petrol station. Nightmare. It's just communication, basically. Once your car has broken down and then gone to a garage on the back of an AA truck, garages are too busy. COVID MOT extension has pushed work backwards and there's a semiconductor shortage. So people can't get new cars. So old cars are being pulled out of retirement to go into garages to have all the work done. So the garages are super busy. And I challenge you, if you haven't done it recently, phone your local garage, see when they can next get you in. Because all of mine around here are jam packed. My last point from the conversation is the unknown motto of fix the member first. And I'd imagine for you guys who are watching who do work in recovery, I'd imagine you've seen it all. You know, you can turn up to someone who knows roughly what they're doing with the car and it might be all right and you might have a laugh and you might get a cup of tea. But at the same time, you are the fourth emergency service. And in some situations, your job that you do is absolutely as important as the police, as the ambulance, as the fire brigade. You're going to turn up to some young mum who's broken down with a three-year-old in the car and you've got to deal with that. You've got to fix the member first. You've got to calm people down. You've got to de-stress people. Sometimes you might have people wanting to fight you. Tell me some stories. Send me some stories by email, jeffbuyscars at gmail.com. Tell me the sort of things that you've had to deal with. Because I would imagine that it's absolutely crazy. That the human side of the job, not so much about the cars and the tyres and the batteries and all that sort of stuff, but the people behind the wheel that can make your day great, but at the same time can make your day difficult, 
and make your day for you guys and girls really emotionally challenging. You know, there must be some pretty heavy stuff that you have to deal with and that you have to listen to. And you've got to sit with people like me in a tow truck. and I'm going to tell you all my problems and then I'm going to jump out and you can be like, bloody hell, he's got a lot to say. Anyway, short video today because the weather's really bad. And to be honest, I'm feeling like crap. So um, let me know in the comments what you think. Tell me more breakdown stories. Um, have you got any funny ones? What have you got for me? Let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching.